you're doing well. Great. Thank yeah. you. A little hot, but not too bad. Now, have you guys ever been to Savannah before? No. We're well, from California. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's pretty far. Well, welcome to our lovely city. Uh, my name is Erica. I'll be your tour guide today. And up ahead of us is Teddy and Murphy. Teddy and Murphy. They are a pair of Belgian draft horses. Oh. And they each weigh just around 2,000 pounds. And they can pull about three times their body weight on wheels. Uh, so between the two of them, they can pull about 12,000 pounds. Now I assure you guys, even if you ate at Paula Deen's for breakfast, lunch, and an early dinner, we are nowhere close to 12,000 pounds. No. Uh, this is a very easy day job for these horses. <laughs> easy. Easy. Whoa. Now what brings you guys from California? Our daughter got married yesterday oh. in Atlanta. Okay. Uh, that's This is where they live, in Atlanta. Okay. And uh, we hadn't been here before, so... You made the road trip? Yeah, road trip while road. we're here, we got to see Savannah. And Walk we got to go... Are you guys enjoying it so far? Absolutely. It's great. A little bit of a different town than most. <laughs> yeah. Moon River Brewing. Oh. He's a home brewer, so we enjoy beer. <laughs> now I'm going to be giving you guys a history tour today. Yeah, yeah good. Okay. A little too early for ghosts, I think. But, uh, so I'll be pointing out different buildings, monuments, squares, that kind of thing. If you guys have any questions at any point in time, please feel free to ask. There is no such thing as a stupid question, uh, only stupid answers, and I have plenty of those. Now, is there any questions before we get started? Well, I just wanted to say if you want to throw any, any uh, uh, ghost story. stories in there, we're, we're happy with that too. Okay, we're, we're, we're ghost fans, I guess you might say. We have a lot of great ghost tours around the city as well. Mm -hmm. We have one that you go in a hearse. So, oh no! So, yeah, the, the hearse ghost tours. Um, also, the trolleys run ghost tours. We have ghost tours as well. So uh -huh. we're the second most haunted city in the country. So there's plenty of ghost things here. That's what I've heard. I mm -hmm. thought you were the first haunted. What, New Orleans is the oh, first. Oh, uh, okay. With all the voodoo and whatnot. That's true. Yeah, and then Salem, Massachusetts, with all the witches is number three. That's number three. I always find it very impressive. We beat out in Salem, but anyway. Uh, Savannah here was founded in 1733 by a man named James Edward Oglethorpe. Oh, okay. Now he was an English man and this was an English colony. However, when it was first set up, it was set up to be a buffer colony. Uh, basically what that means is the Spanish were in northern Florida, buffer, and we were worried about them attacking the Carolinas, like the Charleston area. Uh -huh. So they set up a little roadblock right in the middle of the two for the Spanish to either go around or go through. And that ended up being Savannah. Now convincing people to live in a buffer colony is a little bit difficult because nobody wants to do that. So Oglethorpe's original plan was to use people from the debtor's prison over in England. Basically, if you owed any kind of money, you were in the debtor's prison. Now the conditions were terrible and it was very hard to get out of. So, uh, Oglethorpe thought these were the perfect people to use because they would be more than willing. They didn't really care where they were going. Yes. As long as it wasn't prison. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> now, that worked for a little bit until Oglethorpe realized to make a new colony, you actually need money. And who knew people in debtor's prison did not have any money. <laughs> so that didn't really work out. Of the original 114 colonists, uh, only about a dozen were actually debtors. The rest would have been families that had paid their way over. Uh, one family that paid their way was the Telfairs, and this is Telfair Square here, named after them. Now, Oglethorpe set up four prohibitions with the start of Savannah as well. The first prohibition, sorry guys, no alcohol. <laughs> but uh, that didn't last very long, and we can see how well it went today. So. Yes. <laughs> Now the second prohibition was no slavery. Oglethorpe was personally anti-slavery. He did not believe in it. Although he knew a lot of his colonists didn't feel the same. So they actually used debtors in that form as well. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, the third prohibition was no Catholics. Now, Oglethorpe didn't hate Catholics. He was actually very open-minded to most religions. However, at the time, the Spanish were Catholic. Uh, so he was afraid if they ended up invading, some people might have a conflict of interest. Uh, so he just avoided that altogether. Now, the fourth and final prohibition was no lawyers. Uh, that's just because Oglethorpe okay. hated lawyers. Yeah, he hated them. He said they were scam artists. And if you were truly innocent, you could defend yourself. Which is ironic. He actually got in a lot of trouble here in the colonies and had to go back to England very quickly. And uh, probably could have used a good lawyer. <laughs> Whoa. But I guess no one really wanted to work with him after that. So, <laughs> not your turn, boys. <laughs> That's great. He was kind of not the best leader, but we still named everything after him, so. You guys, he was okay. <laughs> okay? You realize you're going to wind up on YouTube. That's fine. <laughs> I can handle that. <laughs> uh, uh, I had one person on tour FaceTime the whole thing with like oh, their wow. mother. Oh or my something. goodness. I was like, okay, that's fine. You know, it never works. <laughs> so a lot of these buildings are almost 300 years old, right? Um, some of them. I'll show you a good example later of the buildings and their ages. Um, it's very confusing. You might think they're old. Some of them are not as old as they look. They look. So, yeah. gotcha. It's very confusing. But over here on the right, you can see this big gray building along with the little red one next door. These are both owned by the Savannah College of Art and Design, or SCAD. Uh, SCAD is one of the top art schools in the country. And here in Savannah, they have about uh, 65 buildings-ish and about 15,000 students in attendance. Now you might not notice some of their buildings because they use old ones such as these two here. Uh, and they really help the city look the way it does. They keep everything historic looking uh -huh. because they'll use the old buildings that no one really wants. So they'll save them from being torn down basically. Uh, but the big gray building, which you'll see again in a second, that isn't far from its original use. It was an old motel. And today it is one of Stad's dorms. But this building here on the right, this is, or this was an old fire station. Oh, and yeah. today it is Dad's gym. Yeah. Ah. So, that's a pretty good example of how he reused the buildings. Uh, Scott also has a historic preservation uh, degree that will help the city out with its many projects as well. Uh, so Scott really helps out the city here. But. And this is Orleans Square. And the fountain in the center of Orleans Square is actually a, a monument uh, for the German immigrants that originally came over to Savannah. And you can't really see it from here, but if you get up close, around the edge of that fountain, it's a bunch of lily pads with little frogs on it. Oh, okay. It's super cute. <laughs> you guys have any questions so far? No. Oh, I'm just taking it all in because, you know, we're driving... I driving around you don't get to look at stuff you, you look at paying yeah. attention to the roads yeah it's so actually you know yeah going around it's the just city. too hot to walk oh, oh, so hot. <laughs> we're not used to this <laughs> it's probably a little bit hotter than normal well, right? no, or humid heat, heat. It's humid humidity. it's the humidity, yeah, humidity. Oh, that's, different that's kind brutal. of heat yeah yeah we're used to the desert it's dry. It's you can, a sit, you can sit out 90 degrees and it's Although we it, live near the ocean, so we're not so bad. It's though. hot. That's why I really want to go to California just to feel the difference. Yeah. Because I've only lived in the south. So oh, yeah. I'm used to the heat. That's terrible as it is. My first time on the East Coast. 